Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. So we have a lot to talk about. We have to talk about the stack watch from Illusionist. We've got to talk about the Picasso Pro app. We got to talk about. I got to have an update for the Restaurant Magic lecture, and I'm um, addressing some questions and some criticism that we got on the channel recently. And I want to go over all of it today. Lots of stuff to talk about. Got a lot of people here. Ah, oh, Don, you're messing with me again. I know I got sound. I got a little monitor now that tells me if there's sound coming out of my microphone. You guy. Uh, get me okay so uh what are we talking about today well let's i guess we'll start at the top we'll start with the stack watch from illusion that's that's the big one that's the that's the crazy divisive one that's the one that some people love some people hate some people love to hate whoo oh man it is a um it is a crap show out there i'll tell you <laughs> i've been amazed has anybody gone to the magic cafe and looked at the pages that used to be up for it, and now they're just like blocked completely. Like it's uh, like it's like you know you're trying to look for Google on in China or something. It's just boom. <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> Man, there is so much. Oh boy, uh, my intro was muted. Was it really? Oh boy, I I I think you're teasing me. Okay, but I'll, I'll I'll take a look into that. I should have it. Should be working. Should be working. Um, yeah. So the the stack watch, right? Some people are starting to get them. I know Justin has got his. Uh, it looks like uh, Patrick uh, got his. Hey Patrick, thanks for being here tonight. Um, uh, there's a couple of other people that have posted either on on uh, YouTube in the comments or have come over to the Facebook community. If you don't know about the Facebook community. It's where we all get together and hang out when we're not online, okay? So, or when we're not on YouTube. So, that's where we go. Um, allows us to really interact as a community there. So, it's a really valuable tool if you don't know about it. It's the Facebook.com. Or why do I keep saying the Facebook.com? Like, what is this? You know, it's Facebook.com forward slash the Magic Minute Official. So, go check it out if you haven't already. Super cool. Um, yeah. So, people have started to get their watches. Some people have uh, commented on maybe that they're... The dial, you know, around the, around the uh, the watch where you actually see the the um, uh, stack is a little bit maybe too small to see, and that's been an issue for some. Justin left a really great comment and a photograph on the Facebook community page where he talked about um, a way that made it a lot easier, a different way to look at the watch that is a lot easier. There was not a instructional video as of my filming of my last update. But there is now an instructional video. So if you've been waiting for one, go check it out. Um, it looks like Justin has the link here. So thank you for leaving that. It's the illusionist.com forward slash learn hyphen stack. So definitely go check that out if you've been if you got your watch and you are trying to get all the instructions that are supposed to go with it. Oh, man. If anybody's got any questions about the stack watch, I'd love to address them. Just leave me a, a comment down there. and I'll, and I'll But I'm going to continue and talk about the Picasso Pro app. I like it. Um, I don't own it yet. I don't own it yet, but I will buy it as soon as it makes financial sense for me too. Um, I've had to put off a lot of purchases, something I'm going to talk about a little bit later. And let me get the cat outside. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry, I don't like to leave dead air, but my kitty was just scratching on the door and that, that tends to be a bad thing. Um, so... The Picasso Pro app, yeah. I've had to put off some purchases of some things that I, I'd like uh, for this channel um, and for, you know, so, kind of restocking my magic arsenal whenever I go back to work, which we'll be talking about again later in the stream. Um, so I've had to put off some purchases, and um, so I haven't been able to buy it yet, but it is something that I am extremely interested in and will spend my, my money on. So, um, yeah, it, the Picasso Pro app, what it allows you to do, if you're not familiar with the color match, Color match is a routine that allows you to have uh, predict, predict the colors uh, that pre people used to choose to draw in certain parts of a stick figure, like you know what color they'll choose to draw for the shirt and what for the pants and for the hands or for the necktie or whatever, and you can kind of control all of that, uh, which is really 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 cool, and it's a it's a closer for a lot of mentalists, and they have uh, apparently put it into phone form so now you can carry this around with you all you got to do is carry your phone and your prediction and then everything else is done on the spectator's phone uh it seems like like a killer app like one of the best magic apps 
that I can think of. And uh, I'm very excited about it. And $30 is a steal for something that allows you to do that. Now, I have heard, um, and it's important to mention, that um, <sighs> I'm not sh AMS Magician, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I don't know what Magic Roasted Returns, uh, I don't know what that is. Um, uh, maybe that's something I need to look into or know about. Is that a channel? Um, but anyway, the, this app here is uh, apparently people are having problems with it on Android. So that's something that I've, I've heard. I don't know if that's true, but I've heard through the grapevine that there are some issues with the Android version of the app. So uh, look at that yourself before purchasing it. Make sure that that's worked in or up to date or whatever if, that's, if you're on Android. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's, let's go to the comments real quick. I'm going to make sure I'm talking to you all. Oh, if you guys don't mind, I had a question on the Facebook page about the title of some slides. I forgot what they're called. Ah, yep. Yeah. Uh, Justin's uh, working on a, a, a video, I believe, and he needs some advice on slides. So if you know the names of certain slides, he's reached out to me, and I don't know them. I don't know what they're called. Um, so if you guys know, please join us over on the Facebook community page, and that way you can uh, maybe help him out. Uh, Don's asking, have I purchased a stack watch yet or pre-ordered it? No, uh, I have not. Again, that's one of those purchases that I have to. Well, I'm, I'm very honestly. Uh, will I will I buy it? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I in my in my response video or my my kind of my hot take video, I talked about the style of the watch, which I'm not a fan of. Um, not not for general population. I think it's great. I think they went with a great generic style that'll work for a lot of magicians. But for me, I dress in a, in a suit and tie and all in in you know. Um, uh, it, I, that that watch is just a little bit too large and a little bit too um, prominent and, and just demands a little bit too much attention for the style of dress that I normally wear. It doesn't it doesn't work well for for what I'd need. So I would need them to come out with a more elegant um, diminutive design before I could uh, think about wearing it. Um, so just that's my consideration. Do I like the watch? Yeah, I think it's really cool. Uh, if I wore a different style of dress when I was performing professionally, I would definitely pick it up. But I'm cautious about doing that because, again, I don't think it's going to match with w what I wear when I'm performing. Um, so I, I want to address this, too, because now we're talking about StackWatch. We're talking about the Picasso Pro app. These are two uh, things that came out from Illusionist. I've been reporting on them. I've, I, you guys have probably seen I put up, like, three videos. I put up one, a reaction on the... Um, Picasso Pro app, one, and then two on the stack watch. And I got a little bit of a criticism, not to put anybody on blast. I think that everybody has a valid, um, you know, point of view and opinion and that uh, I'm not I'm not criticizing anybody. I, I just, I wanted to ask you because it's made me think about, it honestly made me stop and think, am I doing the right thing? And it seems like to me that those videos have done very well. They've been very popular. They've been liked a lot and have got uh, a good number of views. But um, we had a viewer on the channel who had expressed concern, was, was very polite and even complimentary, but had expressed that those videos were not at all helpful, that if I was uh, covering uh, effects that I had not purchased, uh, what, 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 what value was there in that? And my answer to that is that, you know, I, I never meant those for to be reviews they were magic news which is something that i wanted to experiment with on this channel to have more timely relevant content and give it uh, my impression of what i'm seeing through a professional lens you know whenever i was younger and i'd see some kind of hot new thing on the uh on, on the illusionist whenever illusions had just come out or in theory 11 was brand new um or penguin magic because penguin magic's been around forever i'd see a thing i'd be like oh man that's so cool i gotta buy it and but now uh having spent uh, tens of thousands of dollars on magic, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars on magic over my performing career and then my, my hobbyist career before that, I have a pretty keen eye on what's going to work in what search situations. You know, I'm looking at that creative uh, editing there and I'm going, hmm, you know, maybe that, or it looks pretty on camera, but where are you going to use that? Um, just those kinds of questions. And I thought it would be helpful for my audience to have my opinion of of uh, through a creative or through my professional lens there and also report some news and magic so that was my thinking I wasn't trying to dupe anybody to thinking that I had a review on the product I and I try to in every single video in fact I know in every single video I make a, 
a conscious effort to let people know that I don't own the product. I haven't reviewed the product. I haven't touched it. I haven't seen it. I'm just giving a hot take, which definition of a hot take is it's a lazy editorial uh, uh, way of doing things. You know, you're just giving your own personal opinion based on what facts you have, um, but not doing a deep dive. So I never meant them to be um, any more than just a commentary or my, my opinions and thoughts. So um, some people really didn't, or I'm, I'm sure if, if uh, this one commenter didn't like it, I'm sure there's more, but I wanted to ask you guys, do you like that kind of content or do you think that there's something wrong with it? Um, but I want to hear your opinions. If, if you have had an issue with the Stackwatch videos or with the Picasso Pro app um, commentaries, I want to hear about it and um, you know, it's not going to hurt my feelings. I want to know what you guys think. So ultimately making content for you. Let me go ahead and uh, jump over here in the comments real quick and just see what we got um, here for Stackwatch yet. Uh, Justin says, Picasso Pro, haven't bought it yet and ain't gonna. It's not my cup of tea. Stayed in your video and yes, it actually is a cup, isn't a cup of tea. My watch was a bit difficult to resize. It's a great app, but stopped working for me. Hopefully they get all the bugs out. Is it like a chronograph watch? I have iOS. It is a normal watch with mnemonic stack dial on it. Right now, it's supposed to be look like a chronograph watch, I think. Lane, you're here. Lane, I just caught to your comments. <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight, man. That's awesome. Uh, wow. Random question for all you guys. What do you think of YouTube's new comment format? I don't know. I don't know what I think about it. I like, you know, something I found helpful, but I don't use. I could see it would be helpful if there was a larger channel where somebody couldn't respond to all the comments. But on the creator side, they allow you to have um, canned responses, intelligent canned responses. So you can just click a button instead of having to type everything out. If you were going to say, hey, sounds good, or thanks for commenting, or whatever, you can hit that button, um, and it'll allow you to, to fill in that text without having to type it all if you were just going to say that anyway. For me, I try to always make my responses as personalized as possible, and I have the time to do that now in a small enough audience where I can sit down and respond to every comment. So I try to when it warrants a response. Um, but I can see where it would be really helpful if you were a larger YouTuber and couldn't keep up with everybody. Amos Magician says, the only thing about the stack watch is it's illusionist. I don't trust them. They've had bad quality gimmicks in their cards. Oh, don't get me started on the overrated trash. <laughs> Amos really doesn't like the illusionist decks at all. You know, I, I have to, I have to take umbrage with that. Um, I haven't had, I haven't handled any of their cards since, um, I think it was the artifice deck. I think the artifice deck was the last one that I used. And that's whenever I stopped kind of really enjoying their cards. Um, you know, I, I thought that they were kind of thin and kind of, kind of cheap feeling. Um, but whenever like the black tigers came out, like circa whatever it was, 2000 or whatever, 2000, maybe it was 2004, 2005, something like that. Whenever the black tigers first came out, they were printed on something called UV airflow or UV 500 airflow finish. And they were creamy and smooth and wonderful, and they were super thick cards, and I loved them. And um, and and then I remember getting the Ghost deck was that way too. And then it just seemed kind of like over time, like I think the first one was like the 1800s deck started to feel like it was it was gritty and it didn't really work. And then and then there was um, the Artifice deck which I got, which I wasn't really a big fan of. And yeah, I have noticed that I have not been enjoying their quality as much, but I have not touched any of their cards recently to be fair i haven't touched anything since the artifice deck really um so you know i i've got it i've got an opinion that's not fresh or updated but um i used to really really enjoy their cards they're um oh gosh their master series those were cool the shadow masters and then the regular masters with the with the bike back i really liked those i had i got a brick of those for my birthday one year and i just love the crap out of those uh, yeah Uh, <laughs> what are those gross brown specks that are on the deck when you open it? I I don't know, man. I don't know. I think you're thinking about something else. I don't know. <laughs> um, something else I need to address too. I you know we're um, 25 minutes in already. I can't believe how fast these things go. But uh, before I go on, I would like to know if you either either now or later in the comments, or if you want to join us on the community page, I would like to know your how you are taking that that commentary videos that's something that um i really wanted to give a check in with you guys and see you know um is it is it just a, one person or a few people or is everybody going oh my god what are those videos i don't like them um yeah so uh what else do i want to talk about well i also want to talk about answering a question 
there was a question from uh, from Chris who asked me uh, how I felt about places opening up again. I guess he uh, lives in Georgia and they're starting to open stuff up. I live in the great state of Texas. Yeehaw. And um, I know I don't have an accent because I'm a transplant from uh, the Midwest. But I, man, I don't know. I don't know. I, I got to unpack this. So whenever, whenever I heard that Texas was opening, I was like, well, is that maybe maybe a little bit premature? Like, I'm, I'm ready to go back to work. Like, I'm ready to just kick some butt and uh, start booking some shows again. But I am concerned that maybe it's a little bit premature. I understand that there's also a balance of, like, we don't want to keep people out of work too long because it makes it really hard to get them back to work for a number of economic and fiscal reasons um, and also human reasons. So people need to go back to work. Um, but is it maybe just a little bit too early? I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, what's the term, a, a epidemiologist, is that the word? I, I don't know, pa- pathologist? I don't know. Um, they're, they're, you know, people with much bigger brains whose job that is to, to think about that stuff. So for me, my impression is maybe it's a little bit too early and I'm a little worried. Um, also, there's also a concern because, just because, let's say, everything's opening up to like 25% or something, right? That's cool. Um, but with all the social restrictions in place still, um, and then also, you know, you have to wait for people to feel confident enough to book you again. That's that's the real thing, because I work events, and events are not open yet. Venues are not open yet. People are not doing events. So yes, they're opening up parts of the country, kind of, but they are not saying, "Hey, it's cool to gather in groups of 500 people again or a thousand people," and um, you know, we'll just pack in like sardines, and you know, guy guy will walk around doing magic at the cocktail party. Um, they're, people aren't ready for that yet. We need we need to see that there are not that we, this is a test, right? This is a test. Everything opening up right now is going okay. Let's let let's open the gates a little bit. Let's see how it goes. Okay, that seemed all right. Okay, we can open it a little more. And I think that's really how it's going to go. Which means I'm still going to be out of work for a little while, and I'm 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 nestling in for for the long haul. I'm trying to keep myself. Um, mentally stimulated by by doing a lot of work on the youtube channel which i've i have put out a herculean effort and i have an amazing amount of uh stuff still uh back that's going to be like released over the next couple of weeks and i've been producing content like uh like a madman um and then soon my my daughter will be here and i will be preoccupied with that so um i've got plenty on my plate to keep my mind busy right now which you know is good for my mental health i suppose so um do i think i'm gonna go back to work right away no would i like to absolutely (laughs) you know um i I scratch a little bit of my performer itch whenever i can come and do these live streams this is a way and whenever i'm shooting videos which is somehow not as fun which i think is because i don't have a live audience which is the same reason i don't like doing virtual magic shows nothing against anybody who does them i just uh realized that i that i think that to, i couldn't put out a, a quality enough that i thought would reflect on my brand well and that was concerned about what damage that it might do to my brand long term if i if i started doing those and they were lackluster because live performances i'm you know i'm i'm, I'm an in demand entertainer but my my virtual shows too many technical issues and too many things to go wrong and too many, um, really, you need help with those things. You know, like, these are all usually self-produced things. And if we're still supposed to be, like, you know, avoiding seeing friends and family and that kind of stuff, um, I can't bring my friend over to be a producer on the program or to run camera or that kind of stuff. So running it all yourself, one-man show with all those technical requirements is um, is very difficult and can go wrong very quickly if you don't have somebody to fix it. You can't both perform and produce at the same time it does, in, in real time. And, you know, so I decided ultimately for me that live stream magic shows to put the quality out that I think is reflection of my brand. I decided not to do them. Live streams. Let's talk about live streams too because we're now 30, 30 minutes in and I need to talk about my live streams. So, um, you know, uh, like I spoke last week, you know, I thought maybe... Last week was going to be my last live stream for a while. It wasn't. I'm here. So hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm glad to be back with you guys. But I, again, for, well, let's talk about it for next Friday. I don't know because we're, you know, we're um, the due date was on the 29th and now it's the 1st. So we're a couple days past the due date. 
and I don't imagine that I will be hopping on a live stream next Friday. But again, I don't know. Stay tuned to the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the magic minute official or the YouTube community page if you don't feel like becoming a member over at Facebook um, or you don't have Facebook. Um, but that is uh, where you can get updates on my live streams and if I'm going to be doing them or not. I always um, uh, do some kind of message early in the day. I also have Twitter now. I'm starting to use Twitter a little bit more. You can find me at the Magic Minute. <clears throat> or I think it's at Alan underscore Paletti, I think is, is the, uh, the hashtag for that. Uh, so let's... Let's talk about that. So the live streams, don't know if I'll be here next Friday. I also want to talk about another live stream that I'm supposed to be doing. A couple of uh, weeks ago, I had announced that I was working on my restaurant magic lecture that I was going to do here on YouTube. And, uh, well, I have an update about that, and it's not one that makes me really uh, cheery. The, now, let me, let, me, let me unpack this. So I was supposed to do a restaurant. If you weren't here last time or you haven't uh, been on the channel before, thank you for being here. I'm a full-time professional magician. I teach tips, tricks, and tutorials to help elevate your magic to that next level. So hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon and let me mac smack the phone and hurt everybody's uh, headphone wear and ears. Um, but here's here's the thing. is I, was, uh, I had announced that I was going to be doing a restaurant magic lecture. And, uh, well, I, I'm going to have to postpone that indefinitely. Uh, the work was coming along fine. I had all the things I wanted to talk about. I had a whole a beautiful outline. I was almost finished with the lecture notes. And then, uh, you know, I was waiting, hopefully, that I would get some uh, monetary assistance either through um, the SBA website, which is, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with the SBA, there's two different types of loans that they're giving out to small businesses. That uh, pandemic unemployment assistance, uh, which is done through uh, unemployment um I was waiting for these things to come in. None, nothing had come in yet, and I was going, "Okay, well, all right, well, we'll do whatever we got to do." Um, so, doing a fundraiser to buy a camera is—it won't work right now. Uh, that was—that was the big thing I wanted to be able to get. I want. And there's a a camera. It's the biggest piece of equipment that'll streamline and smooth out the process as much as possible. It's called the Canon M50. Um, it is, uh, for what I can find, best pound per pound. Uh, dollar for dollar uh, camera for my needs um, but uh, I'm not going to be able to do a fundraiser to raise funds to buy that because uh, any funds that I receive is uh, uh, you know um, counted as income and then that income is then reported to TWC and then I'm at a net zero so it doesn't really matter if I did the lot if I did the um, if I did the fundraiser basically it would just count as income and then my I would still you know get whatever money I was going to get so I can't actually raise funds <laughs> right now. So that's going to be something that I'm going to have to wait until I'm back at work, which might mean June, July, August, sometime around there before I can do that restaurant magic lecture. Um, the good news about that is I'm planning on trying to add another restaurant onto my, um, my weekly schedule, right? Just to kind of get back up to speed and, and really start the marketing process again and uh, get some income coming in the house. Um, building some contacts. So I think I'm adding a second restaurant or going to try to add a second restaurant um, whenever I get back out there in the world, which means that I can probably um, film some tips and advice, you know, in situ. So I'm hoping that'll happen and that'll end up being a more um, uh, engaging and much more rich and, and valuable content. So that's something that, uh, that I would hope to... Um, do yes let me go ahead and catch up with the comments here so i can see what all you lovely people are saying the best the only good magic movie right now is the prestige no Al <laughs> amos magician best magic movies are alan's ah uh, yeah i love you too yep thank you justin uh, let's see what we got going on here. Uh, sorry, haven't watched Thursday's video yet. Was at the Grand's house. Anyone here try the Ernest shift one hand? How about the kickstart? How about a kickstart for funding? I would really be into a restaurant magic lecture. Thank you, Lane. Um, you know, I would really. Um, I just got your message on the Facebook uh, page. I see that you're multitasking there, Lane. Um, hopefully, you have me on speaker so you can hear me. Um, so yeah, the uh, Kickstarter. Um, 
N I, no, uh, that won't work either. So here's the thing is I can accept donations. Um, but here's the thing. The way, that the, the way that the structure works is that I'm allowed to accept donations, which are not counted as income. They're counted as gifts. But if you get something out of it, say a digital product like a restaurant lecture or lecture notes, um, then it was a transaction and then that is taxable income. So, no, I can't do a kickstart for funding. Um, <laughs> if you get if you get a product at the end of it, then it is not a um, then it is not a funder. Or then it's income. So, I hope that answers it. Um, yeah. So it sucks. Um, you know, Father's Day coming up, and, I, and my my wife told me not to sweat it because uh, you know maybe things. Um, you know, uh, also might be looking at sell, trying to sell some equipment whenever finances stabilize. Maybe I can um, sell some old equipment and see if I can fund the purchase of it. It's not too expensive. It's not outside of the range of what I could do if I was able to sell some equipment. Some equipment I wouldn't wouldn't want to part with, but if I had to, then it really is enough of a of a quality of life improvement that I think it'll ultimately be worth it. So there's that. Uh, it sucks. I know. I was really nervous about coming on here and giving you guys that uh, update and, and, and telling you guys that I was going to have to postpone that. But it, there it is. I'm flush right now because I'm all upset and nervous about it. There's 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 two uh, shirts that I wear on this channel. One my mother made for me. This is that one. My mother has a um, uh, a small. Uh, graphic uh, company where she'll make uh, t-shirts and, and, and vinyls and stickers and that kind of stuff. She made this one, one for me as a gift. Um, the lettering is a little bit different. The process used to make it is a little bit different, a little bit more durable. But since I have to wear these every single week, uh, several times a week, she made me this one so it can just stay uh, nice and crisp like that. Um, but the ones that I sell are the ones from Teespring. Uh, Teespring... Um, is where you can get a lot of different magic merch that is related to the magic minute. I have stickers and the shirts and some phone cases and some other stuff. So that's where you find all that, including some of my original artwork, which I put out. Um, so if you want to take a look at that, that's where you can find that, but no, it's not, it won't look exactly like this one and it won't be as hard wearing. It'll start to do like the cool, like fading thing, which has got a cool look to it too, you know, but it's, it's um, actually kind of like, it's like spray printed on there. And so over several, 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 several washes, that ink will start to fade and get kind of, uh, you know, more uh, loose and relaxed and stuff. And so it still looks good, but it doesn't look nice and crisp like this one does every single video. But this, again, is made with a different process. And this one is made uh, directly from my mom. And these are not for sale yet. If you're really interested in one of these, uh, I could ask my mom and see what she can do about making you one of those. But if you want to just pick up our other Magic, uh, Magic Minute t-shirt, you can get those at Teespring. There's a link somewhere. I'm sure Justin will do his thing and pull one up. If not, I will pull it up because I'd like to direct you to it. It is... Hold on, my beautiful people. I am pulling up the link for you right now. Can I find my store, friends? So I also want to tell you guys. You know, I'm really excited. I've been watching my, um, I've been watching my my watch time minutes and subscribers and all that kind of stuff. I know, I know that you guys know that that's a those are important metrics that I pay attention to every week. <clears throat> I try not to obsess about them because you can go crazy about that. Um, <laughs> Justin doesn't have the link on his phone. That's okay, brother. I got you. I got you. Oh, Justin, don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. I got you. Um. <laughs> Just so if you guys don't know, if you're joining me for the first time, Justin is the the uh, the moderator with a capital M, with a capital Magic Minute M, and uh, he usually is the one who's who spams the comments with all of the messages that I that I usually put out. I was trying a bot for a while, but the chat bot was just being obnoxious as crap. So I've turned it off until I can tweak it, and Justin's back to his old crap job. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> but uh, you're, you're a good man. You're a good man. 
Let's see. I'm trying to ke keep up. Uh... <laughs> Let's see. People say it's in your sleep too much. It's just misdirection to pocket it. Yeah. It's right behind them. Can you sleep? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm reading your sleeving comments right now. Oh boy, you guys are you guys are talking about criminal activities over here on this uh on this stream here. Criminal activities. Oh, I've never used my magic for for nefarious ends. I mean, could I? Yeah, but do I? No. I'd rather make money the honest way. Um <clears throat> people like you better and you can continue to uh show your face and live in the same area for a long time. So, uh, <laughs> I, t I tend to go the honest route. Um yeah. So, yeah, guys, um, I want to answer your questions today, too. You know, I've, so I've talked about the, the stack watch. I've talked about the um, pocket or the, gosh, Picasso Pro app. Those are the two big ones. Do you guys, are you, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask you directly right now because I'd like to know. Do you guys like that, excuse me, kind of content? Do you guys like that or is that obnoxious to you? Or um, do you like that news coverage? Do you like my, my opinion and my slant on things, even though I don't own them personally? Um, is it something you guys find valuable still? Because if it's not, then I won't do it. But if you are enjoying that and uh, I don't see any problem with it, then I'll continue. So that's up to you guys. You guys are the ones, the hardcore ones who show up every week. So I'd really like your opinions. Also, um, you know, uh, I want to... Oh, Justin likes them. Okay, thank you, Justin. All right, thank you for, for chiming in. I'll let you guys uh, do what you're going to do. But um, let's let's talk about some other stuff here. I have a um, I have a podcast that you guys don't well that a lot of you guys don't know about. I've, I've seen that some of you guys have listened and gave them a listen, which is awesome. I love that, and hopefully you guys are getting some value out of those. I don't I don't have a regular upload schedule for those yet. I don't know how that's going to turn out. It might be that I just turn my um, turn interviews into that and to make them a, a listenable form. Oh, that's something else I want to ask you guys about. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot this. I didn't. I even forgot to write it down in my notes here. Um, Don likes him. Justin likes him. Unpopular opinion. Sucker Punch by Mark Southworth. Sucker Punch was a cool movie. I liked it. I know it was just kind of like weird, random, but Sucker Punch was was a really cool movie. Um, thought it was like all kinds of trippy, where everything happened in her head and it happened like you know in the timelines and everything bouncing back and forth. I thought it was a, I, it, I found it wildly entertaining and visually stunning, and uh, you know, was it a deep think movie? No, but it was a fun action uh, movie, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't think that's what you're talking about. <laughs> that's that's my answer. Um, okay, so Don and Justin like him, so okay, thank you guys. Um, I'll, I guess I'll continue doing them. If I get a lot more hate on them or something, then I'll I'll take a look at them again. But I think that uh, people send it generally tend to like them so i'll continue to do them no the magic poker chip set not the movie i don't know it um i guess i'm gonna have to look that up and see what that's about ams i i'm not familiar with the i don't do a lot of magic with poker chips um so i'll have to take a look at that and see what you're talking about i have no idea what it is but thanks for making me aware of it <clears throat> so um all right you guys notice i want to tell talk you guys something about here you guys see this right here? Do you guys see this? If you'll if you'll um, uh, direct your beautiful eyeballs up to this area right here. Yes, you see this halo surrounding my microphone, and you also see how it's away from my face. So these are things that I wanted to address just from a little uh, two two different things. The first, uh, this wonderful thing is called a shock mount, and I'm bumping my table right now, but I bet you can't hear it very much. I'm bumping my table a whole lot. Um, the shock mount suspends the microphone, if you're not familiar, f suspends it in this uh, elastic mesh here, or this el elastic uh, framework. So what that ha what happens is that dampens vibration so they don't get inside the microphone and cause all kinds of ugly nastiness. It um, is really nice because I, use this, I put this on my desk and I have my keyboard and my mouse and drinks usually and uh so there are things that cause noises and by having the shock mount it really helps improve the quality of the sound when i'm doing live streams and stuff like that so 
This is uh, the latest contribution from uh, my Patreon members. If you don't know about Patreon, I have a Patreon. I'm supported by Patreon. All the funds that I get from Patreon go back into this channel. Even right now, even with everything going on, um, those funds are not for me to live off of. Those funds, any money I, I receive in that respect, go back to funding this channel. So know that and know that there's a lot of really cool stuff available to patrons at different levels. Um, so thank you guys very much. Patreons are awesome. They have um, helped me first get the microphone boom arm and now the shock mount. So now I'm done with the microphone. This should be, this is perfect. This is what I need. It brings it up to my face. All the vibration-y things are gone and, and hopefully this is the best. I think this is the best audio I can get for you guys in the relative uh, foreseeable future. So there's that. So thank you guys very much for your contributions which made, which made this possible. Um, as you can see, it's actually improved the, uh, the workflow a whole lot. So thank you guys. Um, there was another thing I wanted to bring up. There's another thing I wanted to bring up. I like to say it's baby brain, but I, <laughs> I'm not pregnant. <laughs> uh, I want to talk, I want to talk about what you guys are talking about. Oh, God bless you, Justin. Look at that. Justin's already on the, uh, he's already doing the chat bot stuff. Thank you, man. If you have some uh, extra fun and more insight, consider joining us on Patreon and the Facebook fan page. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate you doing that for me. I think Lane left. I don't know where he went. We're, do we're only down to five tonight. I don't know. I guess uh, maybe maybe uh, Texas is opening back up and people are going to work or whatever. Oh, it just jumped up to six. got to make me a liar. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, if you're just joining us, I'm a full-time professional magician. I give my tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you elevate your magic to that next level. I love that you're joining me. If this is your first live stream, thank you for being here. Do these every Friday at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, unless, of course, uh, my wife uh, is delivering our baby sometime around next Friday, and then I won't be. Um, so that's a thing. But uh, generally, you can count on it uh, Fridays at 10 p.m. just about every single week. If you want to get an update and you want to check to make sure if I'm going to be here or not, you can subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you're notified whenever I go live. Or you can check out the Facebook uh, fan page or the uh, YouTube community page. All that stuff's... Well, you know how to get to the YouTube community page because you got two through here on YouTube. But if you want to go about the Facebook page, you can follow the link in the comments Justin has wonderfully provided for us. Lane is here. Okay, Lane. Awesome. I watched Venom today. It's so bad it's funny. You know... <laughs> <laughs> I I I enjoyed it but not because I thought it was a good superhero movie or anti-hero movie. I thought it was fun to see something that I never thought would see a uh, a big screen release that I never thought I would. Well, let's let's rewind a minute. I never thought any of the movies that I've seen since the MCU came out. I didn't think I was going to see any of those movies ever coming out. I never thought I was going to see Guardians of the Galaxy, or like, yeah, Superman, Batman, like, you, you, okay, right? And then, and then, uh, MC, you've, you've seen those forever. And then the MCU goes, hey, Captain America. And the only Captain America movie I had seen up until, um, the MCU did it was some old, like, um, low budget, uh, like, Turkey, film made in Turkey or something. It was some really weird, like, off. Uh, <laughs> off uh, Captain America. You could probably find it out there somewhere. I forget who made it. You could probably check IMDb, but um, I that's the only one I had seen. And I liked it because I was a kid and I thought it was okay, but you grow up and you watch it, you're like, oh, this is kind of rough. Um, but Iron Man and all these things. Like, I never thought I'd see Iron Man in theaters or, or a movie about Iron Man. I never thought I'd see a movie about Captain America. I never thought I'd see a movie about... All right, I'd, like, I'd see characters like Falcon and Scarlet Witch and all these guys. I never thought I would see that. Um, and so it was, it was really cool, you know, uh, and they did a good job, which was great too. And so, um, yeah, I liked Venom because it was scratching that itch of, of, I have not seen Venom on film. I never thought they would do it. I was going, how would they make the symbiote look good and, and believable and give the presence of the character and all that. And I think they did a fine job. Was it, was it? expertly written and and you know some kind of masterpiece of filmmaking no 
but it was a great, you know, it was a great uh, popcorn eaten movie. So, you know, I, I don't think everything that I watch has to just be the the ultimate pinnacle of artistic achievement. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was a fun movie. I don't know if I'd say it's a good movie, but it was fun. Cold Diamond, the Magic Rogue is here. What's up? The Magic Rogue. Magic Rogue. <laughs> oh, God, you know what that reminds me of? <laughs> uh, do you guys remember Cookie Crisp commercials? Cookie Crisp. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored by General Meals. <laughs> or Post. I don't know who makes Cookie Crisp. I should know. I got some in the cupboard over there, but I don't know. Um, cookie Crisp. <laughs> A lot of fan service, not a fan. Okay, yeah. Oh, of uh, Halloween 2018, yeah. All the original parts of Halloween 2018 were terrible. The only good parts were the rehashed parts. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, this is sponsored. No, no, I don't get... Uh, I, I don't have any sponsors yet. Well, I take that back. I... Guys, and... I, you know, I have to tell you, Jim, if you're watching this, it's sitting right here, brother. This right here, this is, uh, Jim Paradise sent me this a long time ago to review on my channel. He gave me, um, some stuff to do, or, or, to, or to share with you guys about, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, um, a video on, um, thank you notes, um, you know, for whenever you're starting your magic business or whatever, the, the importance of thank you notes and talking about those. And uh, Jim Paradise of the Sherpa or Paradise Pen Company, Rhino uh, Distribution, and Sherpa Pens, um, he um, has some amazing writing tools, and so I was going to uh, share those on the channel, show some stuff that some stuff that he has on offer. He has also previously sponsored giveaways on this channel. We were able to give away, I think it was like three um, Sherpa Pen covers to different people during the holidays, which was amazing of him. He just gave those just of his own goodwill and gave people discounts on, uh, on orders and stuff for a while. That was really special. Um, but no, no monetary, dis uh, um, sponsorship. I wasn't paid anything. All I got was the gifts to give you to you guys. And so it was just kind of a pass through for that. Um, also, uh, I'm talking to somebody right now who's a fan of the channel who, uh, as a, as a manufacturer of beer, and um, is interested in sponsoring the channel, and so I'm talking to them, but that probably won't happen until everything kind of the world warms back up again and stuff. So I am actively seeking sponsorships for the for the channel. Haven't haven't uh, got there yet, and the current situation in the world has not made things any easier for uh, attaining those kind of sponsorships for me. I'm a small uh, channel and um, a very niche thing, and so it's very hard for people to want to jump on and give me a sponsorship right now, but. It's my general. It's it's my genuine hope that um, maybe I'll be able to start a relationship with with Illusionist. That's a company that I've admired over the years, and I think do put out a lot of really great products. Uh, if you haven't seen it, Tom Elderfield actually jumped on uh, and left a comment on my review of of Air Ambitious, which I thought was really cool. I thought that was cool of Tom to drop in and say hello. So, Tom, if you're watching this now or later, um, thanks for stopping by the channel. It uh, means a lot to. Uh, get a chance to interact with the creator of an effect that I really enjoy, and uh, you you humble me with your with your presence. So thank you very much for coming to check out the channel. Um, let's go ahead and jump over here into the comments and see what you guys got going on. Taking Spider Man uh, taking Spider Man out of Venom was weird. Yeah, it was. And Spider Man is such a weird thing. Let me talk about Spider Man for a minute because I've got I've got I've got opinions. I've got opinions. So the license the license problem is a total mess. Right, because because the film rights to Spider-Man are owned by Disney, or I'm sorry, not owned by Disney. They're owned by Sony. Um, and then they lent the license rights to Disney to make um all the Spider-Man films and have them in the MCU. And then Sony went, yeah, that's cool, but but you can't have him anymore. He's ours. And then they went, wait a minute, you can't do that. What? We got you just let it so we could use them, and now we got all these great movies. We got a franchise. We got all these things. You know, come on. You guys weren't doing anything good with him. What, what was that Andrew Garfield mess? Um, <laughs> we got a lovable Peter Parker slash uh, Spider-Man. 
we got a like the perfect cast for that. That is like the, like you couldn't have asked for a better actor. Um, they did it right, and they uh, you know increased the 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 uh, brand recognition and the love of and respect of of Spider Man on film. So it's like I think Disney did Sony a huge favor, and. It, they, Spider Man couldn't be in it because of some licensing rights about who owns Venom and who owns Spider Man and who's going to share this and all that. So that's some stupid stuff. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I've got some thoughts on it. I'm hoping. I think that there's supposed to be a third Spider Man film. I think there was. There's Spider Man, uh, Homecoming, and then Far From Home, and I think there's a third one coming. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um. Uh, let's see. Well, Ellen, so I'm going to send a message as a page or reply to someone else starting a conversation. Facebook is weird. I don't know, man. I don't know. That's a tech question. I can't, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to dig into it too much uh, right now to, to find out. I'll have to take a look at that. I have also not seen the Carnage teaser yet. Um, I'm a big fan of Carnage. I think I, my first, one of my first comic books that I was ever given was um was maximum carnage uh you know it was that and then also batman and super or no it was batman and spider-man uh team up uh one where where batman fights um carnage and spider-man fights the joker and uh those are like the two books i got and they were both based around carnage that was my first comic books that i remember getting and i love carnage carnage is scary and then like it continues onwards and then like you know Carnage has a baby or, or or something, or there's a cousin or a sister or family from a... <laughs> I'm, your, I'm your father's brother's cousin's sister's former roommate. <laughs> what does that make us? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Carnage was... Carnage is cool. He's one of my favorite comic book villains. I think he's scary. And uh, I haven't seen the trailer yet, but I guess I'm, I didn't know there was one out, so I'm, I'm excited to look at that after this stream. <sighs> you know what I didn't like that Venom or that Eminem song. Why are you hating on Eminem? Why are you hating on Eminem? He's 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 my boy. We're, we're from uh, well, I'm not from Detroit. I'm from a, a suburb outside of Detroit, but about an hour outside of Detroit. But. Uh, that that that's that's growing up like you know like uh my my friends used to see Kim shopping at the CVS you know uh just like it was nothing you know it's was, it was cool I mean, there was also instances with Kid Rock and and all that kind of stuff but but um yeah they were just they just lived there for a long time and I think Eminem I don't know if Eminem still lives there but he did he did uh through his through the start of his fame and um yeah I they, I remember, remember in, in middle school, the cool thing was to be able to say, I'm Slim Shady, I'm the real Shady. Oh, the Slim Shadies are just imitating, so I want the real Slim Shady. Please stand up. Please stand up. Uh, like, it was cool if you could say that, because it was a rap, and people didn't know how to rap. And it was, um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'm showing my age. <laughs> hey, all we had back in the day was Grandmaster Flash, and we were happy. That's all I'm saying. Grandmaster Flash was the bomb.com, man, I'm telling you. Um, don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Um, uh, da, 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 I want to see where R-rated cut of uh, Venom Curse producers for cutting out 40 minutes. Yeah, they'll put it back in in the. Uh, I think they'll probably put that back in the video if they haven't, or you get like some special release copy, f the five or ten year anniversary, where you're gonna get all the, all the unreleased footage or the director's cut or something you're gonna get a you, you'll get you'll get your movie how many times did they recut blade runner like a thousand times the director's cut the theatrical release the director's theatrical release cut cut the director's theatrical release cut volume two you know they did so many versions of blade runner the ultimate collection ultimate blade runner the director's cut theatrical release version uh eu <laughs> You know, Region Four. You know, <laughs> but it's so many, so many versions of Blade Runner. But I, I bet they'll probably put that out sometime. All right. Spider Man Three is a mess. Ah, oh, don't tell me that. Spider Man Three, the the um, other one, the Cider House Rules guy. Yeah, that was that. Spider Man Three and that one was a mess. But don't tell me the other one is a mess. I hope it's not.
I'm talking about Sam Raimi. I hope you're talking about Sam Raimi. Hey, Scott, we got a subscription. Woohoo! This is when we do the subscription dance. Nobody ever wants to see me do that again. I watch him unsubscribe. <laughs> Thanks for the subscription, man. Appreciate that. Thanks for coming to join the Magic Minute, where we take tricks and turn them into real magic, and sometimes just riff about movies that we like. Um, so I don't know I, if you if you're joining, if you're subscribing, I assume you've probably not seen one of these live stream before. The live streams are kind of my place to talk about what's happened uh, the past week with the Magic Minute, behind the scenes stuff, and then we just kind of come here to hang out because, well, we're uh, it's, you know, we all like the same stuff. You know, magicians tend to all flock together because we're all, we're all nerds and we all like our nerdy things. So thanks for being here. I hope you enjoy your time here and I hope you, um, feel that your subscription was worth it. Please stay tuned. I've got a lot of really neat content coming out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your subscription. Uh, Yes, Justin, thank you for refreshing my brain. Yes, there was something else I wanted to talk about. I wanted to ask you guys about the balloon twisting video. Um, it's something a little bit different. You know, I've done interviews. Excuse me, I've got the burps. I apologize, guys. I am so sorry. I respect you more than to do that in front of you. I apologize. Um, the, the, the balloon twisting video. So I've done interviews before. I did, a, I did an interview with Diamond Jim Tyler. And then um, I just did that one with Ron Shover. And then I have another one coming up, a secret ace up the sleeve, if you could say that. Um, it's a pretty exciting one for me. This guy's a, a close personal friend of mine, and he's also been involved with some incredible magic pro uh, um, projects. And um, I'm, I'm honored and humbled to call him a friend. So um, that's coming out later. Um, you'll see that in a, in a couple of weeks' time. But uh, I wanted to see what you guys thought about it because, you know, I figured some of you guys were interested in the restaurant magic lecture. Some of you guys may um, also may be considering balloon twisting or whatever. They're very um, symbiotic things that tend to go together a lot. You know, I know how to twist balloons. If I do kids' birthday parties, which I still do occasionally or was doing occasionally before I <laughs> came on the stream, it was a way to add an upsell to the products that I offered because, you know, you do your magic show and you have like, well, how many different variations of a magic show can you do? Um, how many different premium illusions can you add into the mix? What else can you do if they want you there for longer? And balloon twisting is an obvious example. It's also a really easy way to get some, um, to get some, your foot in the door doing restaurants. And um, I thought that'd be really valuable to some of you guys because I didn't know at the time I was going to have to postpone my magic lecture which I'm really sad about but I'm hoping that retroactively that'll scratch a little bit of an itch for you guys <clears throat> Ron is a good dude in fact he was just uh, featured uh, on, tech, on NBC News this morning uh, 7 a.m. Uh, news broadcast about some of the stuff that he's doing in his community to um, bring smiles to children's faces. He's um, he's doing something really cool. He's making these elaborate balloon sculptures. I don't know if you've been over to his uh, site. It's Balloon Insanity. You should go check him out. Um, he's got a Facebook page where you can see a lot of his uh, work, photographs of his work. But he uh, he does some very elaborate, very, very beautiful uh, balloon uh, sculptures. And um, he has been going out and giving them to people, right? Just giving them to, to to neighbors with kids and stuff. And if it's a kid's birthday or something, he's going to make uh, make them something real elaborate and stuff and just drops it off and gives it to them. And, uh, you know, those things are not cheap to make. He's, um, or it's not cheap to hire him either. So, you know, that he's doing that service completely of his own, um, you know, free will and, uh, and just good-natured heart really speaks to the kind of man that he is. And I'm glad that the news story was done about him. Uh, I, but I want to see... <laughs> Cole, do it. I'll do the dance. Go ahead. Unsubscribe. Subscribe again. You'll see the dance. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Ron is awesome. Great interview. Don, thank you for the comments. Yeah, so, yeah, I, thank you. I, I, I'm, 
I wanted to bring that. I know it's really long form content. The thing is, the Magic Minute tends to, I don't really tend to do videos that are over 10 minutes long. Most of my videos stay in the three to five, three to six minute time frame. And so every once in a while, I want to come out with a 30 minute video. I'm afraid that I'm just, everybody's going, whoa, I don't have the time to watch this. And I can tell by my watch time minutes that a, a good percentage of you can't watch it all the way through. And I totally get that. Um, I don't expect you to. That's just, that's, that's a huge ask. But uh, hopefully there's some valuable stuff in there for you guys and you enjoy those because I have another one coming out. And if there's enough of a response to them, I'll do more. I, I think that it's really cool to have, bring another voice on the, on the channel um, and get, get some, another opinion or another voice or another perspective. And I think that that's helpful because otherwise you can get into a microcosm or a echo chamber where, you know, it's just my opinion and, um, I'm not always right. <laughs> In fact, I rarely am. So, um, having somebody else there who has a different perspective and can give you a different way to look at things, I think is, is super helpful. And so I hope to bring you guys that kind of value here on the channel. Let's see. Um, yeah, random. I never really understood why so many people like the color match routine. The routine effect itself is, it takes a really long time. That's the point. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, well, here's the thing, Ganther. Thank you for thank you for your comment and thank you for being here. I haven't seen you here on the channel before, so thank you for coming to join us. I really appreciate you being here and checking out the channel. Um, so here's how I feel about color match. Uh, it's a good route. If really long doesn't mean boring. Really long doesn't need to be mean boring. You know, um, uh, Avengers Endgame was like three and a half hours long. Titanic was three hours long. Um, long doesn't mean boring. Doesn't have to mean boring. If if you've seen a long version of it that you don't like, it's probably because it wasn't performed well. That's that's. That's I mean, that's a blanket generalized statement, and that will I don't know that that'll hold up for everything. This is just I'm riffing here, but the chances are that it's just wasn't performed well. Um, long routines can be very good, you know. A mentalist, oh, so so a magician will probably do about nine to twelve effects, usually about nine effects uh, during the course of a thirty to forty five minute program. Uh, but as you get more experienced and you get more jokes and you get more laughs and you know how to work a stage you can do three effects that have different phases in them you know you don't as long as you're entertaining the the length of the effect really doesn't matter um color match is a good uh it i mean the premise is is incredible right because and it's hard it's an, it's it's very difficult to backtrack and try to think about well what did he do because how does every single color match because anytime you Right there's this mental thing where you go, oh my gosh, how there's no way to predict that, and yet, and yet you do, and you make it look effortless, and um, so yeah, I I don't know, and maybe that's why. Ganther, am I saying it correctly? Excellent. Okay, I hope I hope I am. I hope I am. I don't ever want to call people by the wrong name, you know I. Uh, uh, my mother's name is Karen, but people used to call her Corinne all the time. Or um, my name is Alan, but I get Adam or Ellen. Somehow I get Ellen. Maybe it's because of my accent or my Midwestern accent. I say Alan um, with a soft A. It sounds like Ellen. Um, but I was like, do I look like an Ellen? Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I do. I don't. Um, not a name I chose for myself. My parents, uh, you know, are having a, we're having a we're having a laugh, but. Yeah, so that's that's my thing, Ganther. Is yeah, man. It's um, it's just about the skill of the performer performing it. If they a long routine doesn't have to be boring. It just has to be broken up, and it has to have pacing, and it has to have um, it has to be entertaining. So th that's I think that's the I think that's the thing. I hope I hope I uh, did that or give that justice. Thanos was like five years younger in Endgame than he was in Infinity War. He's not as developed. Oh, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, okay. Nobody. Illusionist. Here's, uh, hey guys, so you know what sponge balls are for kids? Let's make them that edgy painting by, or, or make them edgy by painting them back. We'll call them worker sponge balls. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I don't use sponge balls, and I don't use sponge balls for a number of reasons. And actually, 
let's bring that up. Let's talk about that because that's that's related to the way the world is going and what we're going to be going back to uh, whenever everything lifts up and we're all back to work, all of us entertainers. <clears throat> Sponge balls are harbors of disease. Sponge ball, I'll say that again. Sponge balls are some of the dirtiest things you can ask a spectator to hold on to. Sponge balls are disgusting. Spongeball magic. I like Spongeball magic. I don't do Spongeball magic. Um, doesn't fit me uh, in my, my performance style. But I enjoy watching Spongeball magic. And I think you can do some very good Spongeball magic. But sponges hold a whole heck of a lot of bacteria in them. And if you're working show to show and you're handing them to random people every single time, you don't know where they've been, you don't know if they've washed their hands, so they just came from it, taking a poop and, and wiping their hand bare. Sorry to use such a uh, you know crude visual there, but um, you don't know who's touching those balls, where they've been, right? So, and then you're just handing them from person to person to person. They're they're absorbing all of that from people's hands, and then you're handing them to other people. They are nasty, um, and they are not something that I recommend you do, especially going forward. Uh, hygienically, don't do it. You know, unless they come with an anti, come out with an antimicrobial version of sponge balls that are stay ninety nine nine percent clean or something. I had a friend who used to soak them in. Um, he would keep them in an Altoid tin with um, hand sanitizer, and then he would take them out and then you know whatever. But the thing with that is, is their balls are going to be wet. People are going to touch them and go, what the heck is this goo stuff on them? Why is that on there? And then it also makes the sponges break down faster. And so I just, I, I say, just stay away from sponge balls. And I, I, I don't want to be the guy who's dumping on sponge balls. Because I think that there are some really incredible performers who do some really amazing work with sponge balls. Uh, use a fresh pack every time if you got to do that. Do it, do it, go the way of, um, of playing cards like I do. I use a pack of playing cards once, okay? Let me let me um, let me blow your minds right now. Why do I use bicycle playing cards and not these for performing? Do I like the way these look better? Yeah. Do I like the way they handle better? Generally. Um, do I think that they reflect some kind of cool panache for me? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not just talking about Theory Eleven. Uh, it's just what I happen to have on on hand because I really like them, but I don't perform with them. And I don't perform with them because they're too expensive for me to one and done them. You know, I, I use a deck of cards one time. They are single-use things to me when I'm performing. Um, during the course of a three- or four-hour gig, I'm going through a couple decks. That might sound crazy. You might be going, why are you throwing away your decks of cards? Oh, my gosh, I've been using the same deck of cards for six months. You can't. Whenever you're performing professionally, you're handing cards from person to person to person. You're going to have to throw those away because you dare, they transmit disease. I expect whenever I go back to work that um, I will let people know that or I will crack open a fresh deck uh, every time that I have to have somebody handle the cards. It's just going to be what it is. It's just, it's, it's um, about being hygienic, you know. Um, they also look better. They also look cleaner, which means I can't ever get a broken in deck. That's very frustrating for me because I really love a broken in deck, but... Um, I have to open them and throw them away before they ever get broken in. And so I've had to learn how to use cards that are a lot more slippery, a lot more rough than, um, than a broken in deck. So um, <laughs> I'll buy all those decks you've used once. I, I don't know you'd want them, man. Like, I, again, they've been around like everybody. They've been, you know, you don't know what the person did before. I don't know. The kid might have picked his nose and, and then touched the card. You don't, you don't know. You don't know. Um, it's one of the reasons I'm usually uh, I can stay away from getting sick uh, during during uh, the flu season and everything is because I am very careful already. I don't put anything in my I don't do mouth magic. Um, I'm washing my hands constantly when I'm performing, and I am always using a fresh deck of cards. I just it's just what I do. So. Um, I would recommend that you model that, and that's just professional advice. That's something that I've already done for years, and it's for those reasons. I don't want to get sick, and I don't want to get other people sick. So I, I don't want to be a, a transmitter of disease. 
Um, so that's something that you might want to consider. Sponge balls right now, um, unless there's a solution that comes out for that or there's a way that you can manage it, they might need to be single-use items. I don't know if that's very eco-friendly, um, but it might be what you need to do or you might need to use like a set, sanitize them, and then reuse that set you know, um, for different performances. That might be the way to do it. But you're going to have to do that because that's, that's gross. It's gross. Just, I'm whatever. I'm whatever. Autograph them and give them away to us. I'm not going to give you disease-ridden cards and go, here, take my filthy, used, disease-ridden cards and enjoy them. I'm not going to do that, Don, Ron. Or Don, I'm sorry. I got Ron on my brain still. Don, you bring up an interesting thing. Don't go anywhere, guys. I'll be right back, okay? Don't go anywhere. I'm just leaving for a second. Um, I'm going to put up this really beautiful uh, little screen while I'm gone. And I'm back. Okay. Don, you brought up something. Um, so you were talking about... I did return. I did. I am. I, ha I have returned. Um, so I've put together a little goodie pack. Okay? So this is, this is the final thing, I think. This is the final thing. I've gone through my stuff. Oh, not a potty break. I had to grab a thing. And I didn't want you guys to see me running around my room crazy trying to grab it. I thought I'd just try to keep a semblance of quality here on this channel. <laughs> Like it's ever stopped me before. Um, so here's here's something I want to show everyone. If you're just joining us, we have some new people here. We have Ganther and uh, Scott who just joined. Don, the Don that you guys are seeing in the comments right now, that Don uh, very generously donated some things to a giveaway that I'm putting together. Um, and Justin, the moderator, the the um, the incomparable moderator, has uh, also contributed things. So I want to show you guys what we have right now. Okay, I uh, so the first uh, we'll, we'll go we'll go through these in order. Okay, just kind of so Don uh, very very generously mailed me some um, magic effects that I'm going to be able to give away. It's a six card repeat, and a two and a three card Monty and a floating matchstick. Okay. And then also, um, I have this really great book, this Clown Gags uh, book. This has actually got a lot of really, really solid gold material in it that you should uh, definitely know. So um, I've been giving it a little peek and reading it because uh, it's cool. And I'm sad I have to give it away, but you, he also gave this. And then Justin gave i believe uh this is the dvd because i was going to give you a dvd for winning something and this is what we're doing instead justin remember i have a, i have a deck of cards coming out to you soon i haven't mailed them yet but i will get get those to you okay um 40 ways to force a card this is based off of the animan classic of uh i think it was uh, 202 ways to force a card um but this uh, fabulous dvd shows you a lot of different ways to force a card lots of really useful ways it's got to be in every magician's uh library learn all that stuff I'm also going to be giving away Stigmata by Wayne Houchin. This was an illusionist to talk about illusionists. This is an illusionist release. Um, it is, it's a cool effect if you're into street magic or kind of um, um, kind of supernatural magic. This is a very, very good one. Definitely something you should check out. Um, and then also, I'm going to be giving away two, two Apex decks. I'm going to be giving away an Apex Bomb deck. If you don't know about these, these are something that I produced with my friend Joe. Um, and then I became the sole owner of them after he decided that uh, he no longer wanted to, to uh, pursue that. Um, so I've got the rest of the stock. Brian Brushwood has uh, the lion's share of the stock now. I've only got a small reserve of these left. So this is coming from my personal collection, my personal uh, stash, okay? So you get an Apex Bomb deck, still uh, factory sealed. And then also... Uh, because people have asked about it, uh, a signed one. 
Uh, this one I had to open. I had to take the plastic off so I could sign it. So you also get a signed one that's open. I haven't played with the cards. I haven't touched the cards. The box is not sealed because we didn't put stickers on them. We want to make them easy for professionals to get into when they're actually out of gigs. But uh, there it is. So, and, and, and. Not only will the winner be receiving all of that. Not only will all the winners be receiving that. But they will also be receiving, in kind of a roundabout way, because this is how we have to do it, uh, three months of a Patreon membership at the $10 level. Don has also donated uh, $30 to the channel um, to gift to someone to then, well, the way that we wanted to do it was just that I would allow someone to sign up and I would just pay for their, or he would be paying for their three months, but Patreon doesn't allow you to gift Patreon memberships yet so what if, what we're gonna have to do is i'll it'll be thirty dollars i'll give you thirty dollars and then you have to promise to spend that thirty dollars to actually check out the patreon at the ten dollar level and then you just basically give the money right back to me um and so we're just <laughs> we're even it's ridiculous but that's the way we have to do it because patreon has not got on that yet i've sent a message to him to ask him about that including that feature but they don't have it yet so uh, there's a whole lot of value there. There's a whole lot of value. You get a lot of a lot of magic, and some DVDs, and three months of ten dollar level uh, patronage on Patreon, my Patreon, where you get to see, um, you know, upcoming videos that haven't been released yet, bloopers, and behind the scenes stuff. I have special uh, stuff that I write about, show notes, all kinds of really cool stuff that you can only get by being a patron. So. Um, yeah. Oh, and the, you also get your name in the comment on every video, or you get your name in the in the credits in every single video. Um, that all big prize. That's a that's a heck of a giveaway, if you ask me. I don't think we can do much more than that right now. Um, how we're going to do the 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 giveaway? I don't know yet. <laughs> but it's a heck of a one. It's sitting right there. Someone's gonna get that, and I'm really excited for that person because they're getting a lot of cool crap. Um, but I don't know how that's going to happen yet. So, um, I'm, I'm still developing how we're going to do that giveaway and, uh, I'll figure that out as we move forward. Okay. That's going to be something I'm going to have to, uh, invest some, some gray matter into. I, I, I'm close to a way of doing it, I think, but, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Cause I've got to have a way that's measurable or something or some, some fair way to give it away. So I haven't figured that out yet, but that is going to be super cool. And you guys, uh, somebody's a very lucky person. They just don't know yet. Um, whoa, I am Illuminati. No, Illuminati confirmed. No, I'm not Illuminati. Um, uh, let's see what else we got here. I want to make sure I'm, I'm catching all your stuff. <laughs> That's the, the, the virus that shall not be named. Right. If you if I utter those if I utter those words from my lips, I'll instantly uh, get slapped by YouTube. So I can't do that. Also, something I want to bring up since we're talking about Patreon, um, something I've I've changed up the, the the way that it works a little bit. So Patreon used to be you know you got one dollar, which was a friend level. You didn't get any kind of benefit for that. It was just gonna go. It was just a way to say hey, I really like the content. You know, I can't really do the five or ten or you know I can't I can't do that. But I like the channel. Hey, here's some money, um, which is great. And it would help support all the efforts that go here on the, on the channel. But, um, you know, uh, I, I thought that, that was I thought that I needed to do more. So if, now if you become a friend of the channel, that's what they call it. It's the friend level where it's a dollar a month, $12 a year. You get your name in the credit on every episode, right? On every episode. Why did I say that? That's, I said it weird. Um, so yeah, now even if you get if you get even just a dollar, you get your name in the credit and you get to see some some uh, um, props every single time I do a video, which is a lot. <laughs> so um, and that'll be that'll be retroactive. If you guys go join right now, then that's gonna have to be that's not gonna be able to be retroactive. That's gonna have to be moving forward after like May twenty first, which is like the furthest out video that I have. Um, whatever, I'll still leave your name in a list in the description. I'll go and update that, um, but it won't appear in that video up until after May 21st. But if you want to become a friend, thank you. That'd be really awesome of you. I'd really appreciate um, the contribution. And also, hopefully, you would uh, you know, enjoy the content that I'm putting out and know that you were helping um, help me 
uh, gain more production quality and, and improve my channel. So, uh, let's see. Let's see what else we got going on. I also changed also some of the other tiers. I'll tell you that too. I also I, I lowered the cost of, of, of one tier and I added some other benefits to the $10 tier, I believe. So, um, it's been restructured and I think that it's a little bit, uh, got a little bit more reason to jump on board now. So, I'll just leave that there. Uh, I thought you would be like Ollie Mealing and take a one year break. Nope, not taking a one year break. I'm staying here. Uh, I also just bought a cup of coffee from Teespring or a coffee cup from Teespring and it's going in the price package. Holy crap. <laughs> Done. Thanks. He's getting a cup of coffee. Somebody's getting a somebody's getting a magic minute coffee cup. Rock on, dude. Don, you were you were the king. You were the king. Ganther says, I'm curious to hear some magic talk. I used to perform as a mentalist. Now I'm not sure. Um, magic talk. Um in what respect? Do you want me to like talk in my my magic talk voice? Jack. <clears throat> it's 11.17 Central Standard Time. And I'm wearing a red shirt. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what magic talk is. Um, hmm. How do we get into the contest? I'm stoked. Yeah, it's a freaking awesome contest, isn't it? It's like the giveaway is just over the top, amazing, crazy. And uh, we need a way to give that away i don't know yet i don't know yet it's gonna it's gonna happen it's gonna happen maybe i'll do it i don't know what i'm gonna do it i i don't i, I don't know what form it's gonna take yet because really it's just it's steamrolled into this giant giveaway and i don't know i don't know how it's gonna happen yet i don't know so we're, we'll figure it out we'll figure it out lane says he really wants one of those apex bomb decks but brian wants like seven dollars to ship it uh, well, you know, I mean, it's because it's probably because it's just the one thing and they've got standard shipping, you know, um, I don't think Brian's trying to get anybody over on, on a shipping. He's, he's an honest and uh, fair guy, but it might just have to do with whatever shipping rates they can negotiate. Um, you know, they may be, maybe their lowest amount is like $7. And then if you order over a certain amount, I don't know. I haven't been over to scam stuff, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, sorry, that's. Unless maybe, all your, are you out of country? That might be part of it too. If you're out of country, that might be a little bit more expensive to ship to you. Um, not sure why it's seven bucks. That's it's a little, it seems a little high to me, but I'm sure there's a good reason. Um, I'm not a friend. I'm not at friend status. Magic Rogue, what are you talking about? I'm not Illuminati. I do like sixty six laws of the Illuminati or anything. Oh poop! <laughs> Just magicians talking about magic. Yeah, well, that's um, that's something I want to bring on too because we we have that here. We have that. We all we're all well. We we jump into movies and other things too, and, and just kind of whatever's cool. But um, yeah, somebody I'd like to come co-host the show with me. I'm considering having somebody either come in physically, uh, whenever we can do that again. Either come in physically and and co-host the show with me, or excuse me, sorry, or have them just uh, call in and and I can do like a um a split screen video live stream thing, which is what I'm thinking about doing as well. But I'd really like to have that because then we could have some real magic discussion and take questions and that kind of stuff. And um, the person I have on tap for that is a real, um, a, a, a real expert, a real expert at magic. He's, he's not a magician anymore. He's retired and gone on to do other things, but he really knows this stuff. He's uh, my best friend in the world. And um, somebody I would really love to co-host this show with because him and I have, I think a really great chemistry, and I think it would be, work really well on a, on a stream like this. Um, but yeah, that's something I'm thinking about doing, and that'll be more. It'll be loosely. It'll it'll be around magic, of course, because this is what this channel and this goal are is. But um, it might go, it might run off tangentially into other topics or whatever. But it always come back to magic somehow. The giveaway comes with transmitted disease. Not if I can help it, AMS, because I am um, being very careful. Of course, I have not gotten sick, and I've got a newborn on the way. I've been extremely careful about getting anybody sick or, or bringing a sickness home. Um, certainly don't want that with a newborn. You know, it's bad enough already. Certainly, yeah, you don't want to add that complication, that scariness to it. So, no, it shouldn't come with any of that unless it gets somewhere in, in route. What is that you're drinking? I, I don't think I can answer that because then uh, YouTube will not sponsor me. Or not not allow me to monetize. 
Not sponsored. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. Um, it's a drink. Um, yeah, this price package is ridiculous, guys. Somebody's gonna. <laughs> this is freaking Christmas. That's. <laughs> I can't believe it. How much it snowballed and Don really deserves the lion's share of the credit here. This is basically his baby that uh, he's just been feeding, and it's getting nice and plump now. So. Ah, you crash. Ganther, can you uh, just chit chat with us over the Magic Minute Facebook page? Yes, thank you. Please do. My aunt lives near uh, Galena, Illinois. Am I saying that right? G Galena or Galena, Illinois? Magician there has his own theater. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a magician friend down here um, named Confetti Eddie, and I've. He's the only public show that I'll go do anymore. I'm thinking about going back to maybe doing... Um, I used to do um, the World Famous Improv Comedy Club. Uh, I used to play there a lot as a comedy magician. And I might go back to doing that again. Um, in fact, I'm really getting the itch to do that again. Maybe run the nightclub circuit a little bit. I, I think I'd really love to do that. Do some comedy clubs uh, around the country and to book some book some appearances. Um, got a real itch to do that. Um but it's really hard whenever you got a newborn. You, like, you can't leave, you know. You can't leave Mama to, to have to deal with all of that while you're running around the country. So I don't know if that's going to happen. But uh, responsibility, you know. But, yeah, my friend Confetti Eddie does a, has a, has, has Confetti Eddie's Magic Parlor in, uh, in uh, downtown, uh, uh, downtown Dallas. And it's a cool venue, man. It's, it's the only one I play anymore. And um, it's, you got to go check those out. you got to go check those out. If you have a magic theater near you, go there and watch some real live magic. It's awesome. Uh, let's see. Alan is Alan Warson with an alternative, you know, alternate universe confirmed. I'm actually I'm a little bit Irish, so maybe I'm Alan Warson. I don't know. Uh, Alan is totally Alan. <laughs> Alan is totally Alan Warson in another dimension. I don't know. I'm, I'm mostly Italian, though. I don't know. Maybe I, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Alan Rorson. Just turn around like this, and then... Then I pull off the mask. <laughs> I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for you meddling kids. You know? <laughs> old man... Old, old man Withers. <laughs> Alan, Alan Rorson the whole time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's not me. Oh, boy. Looks like my kiddo's out of bed. Uh, gentlemen and ladies, if you are here, present this evening, or watching later, I think that this is where... I think this is where we gotta go to bed. I think this is where we gotta go to bed. Um, gotta gotta get my son back in bed, and, uh, you know, Mommy's uh, still still pregnant right now, and I don't think we want to be on this stream for too long. It's We've been going for about an hour and 34 minutes. It's about about time we call it a night. So, and then now the camera isn't focusing. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Uh, sorry to do this. I, I wanted to run a little bit longer. I'm having fun with you all, but looks like we got to cut it short um, or cut it on time. And um, if I'm here next week, if I if I'm going to be here next week, I will leave you a I'll leave a message either on the Facebook community page or on the YouTube community page. If you haven't checked out um, my my podcast yet, podcast yet, please do that too. That's anchor.fm forward slash magic minute. And um, please uh, leave me a voicemail. You can actually do that too. I'll leave a link on where you can leave me a voicemail so I'll get it on that podcast and I can answer your questions. I'd really like to do that. Um, good night, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm so happy we got to see some new faces here tonight. That was super awesome. Got to see Ganther. Got, to, got a new sub, sub tonight, which was great. Um, appreciate all you guys being here. Super cool. Oh, Jacob just uh, subscribed. Thank you, Jacob. Right on. That's what a way to end the night. <laughs> what a way to end the night. I don't think we can do anything else to top it off. That's the cherry on top. Good night, everybody. Don't forget to leave it a thumbs up if you like the video. Share it with your friends. And um, I will see you guys in a 